Hello, in this video we'll be discussing beta oxidation and the process of breaking down fatty acids in order to produce ATP. So already, hopefully you have viewed our videos on glycolysis and Krebs and the oxidative phosphorylation process. I can't stress enough that all of these different pathways are not isolated standalone chemical reactions. They are smaller parts of a larger ATP producing machine. When we talked glycolysis, we talked about the breakdown of carbohydrate glucose molecules. Here for beta oxidation, it's going to be all about taking long chain fatty acids and harnessing the energy from those molecules. So in your class, you've likely already discussed glycolysis and Krebs. Beta oxidation is another process that will flow into the Krebs cycle for the overall ATP production. Here is going to be a typical look of a fatty acid, long chain carbon to carbon molecules. And on the very subunit end, we get a carboxyl group, which will make this a carboxylic acid technically, which is where the term fatty acids wind up coming from. Long chain carbons linked end to end. Beta oxidation, the term itself describes the location at which we cut these long chains. We cut them into subunits, which then we can then put into the rest of our processes for ATP production. So let's count the carbons first to get to where we see this beta carbon. Here's our carboxyl ending. Here is the first carbon after it. We're going to call that the alpha carbon. We drop down. This carbon at this point is our beta carbon. The process of beta oxidation is to cleave the bond between the third and fourth carbons in that chain. Or, stated another way, to cleave the bond directly after the beta carbon. So as the pair of scissors would suggest, this is where we're making the cut. We cleave that long chain fatty acid at that point, and what we're left with is the remainder of the chain with a brand new carboxyl group on the end, therefore reestablishing a brand new alpha carbon and a brand new beta carbon, which we can cut again. But also what we just produced was a single three carbon molecule. Now, where else have we already discussed three carbon molecules? We discussed them when we did glycolysis. We had glucose as a six carbon molecule getting cleaved down into two individual pyruvate molecules, which contain three carbons each. We converted that pyruvate into a different three carbon molecule that we've already discussed from Krebs that being acetyl-CoA. Each of these molecules that we clip off every time we do a cycle of beta oxidation is a three carbon acetyl-CoA molecule. We use acetyl-CoA as a starting point for our Krebs cycle. So just like glycolysis continued into Krebs, so will beta oxidation. As we chip away at that long chain fatty acid, and each time the chain gets a little bit shorter, but each time we get a new molecule of acetyl-CoA that can go into Krebs and continue on with the ATP producing process. Acetyl-CoA will enter that cycle, produce a single molecule of ATP for each turn, and the high energy reducing equivalents of FADH2 and NADH. We get three NADHs and a single FADH2. So to put this into perspective, again, Check out the videos on glycolysis, Krebs, and oxidative phosphorylation. Glycolysis produces pyruvate, which leaves the cytosol and enters the mitochondria to be converted to acetyl-CoA. Then we go through Krebs cycle, and all the NADHs and FADH2s from both of those processes enter the oxidative phosphorylation reaction to produce the bulk of our ATPs. Here is where we see our beta oxidation process fit in to this current model. Fatty acids break down into acetyl-CoA through the process of beta oxidation. And as the other arrow would suggest, if we want to produce a fatty acid, say if we were producing cellular membranes, for example, we could take these acetyl-CoA molecules, link them together to form longer chain fatty acids. But in this case, it's going to be catabolic and we're looking at ATP production. 
So fatty acids go through beta oxidation to produce molecules of acetyl-CoA, which then continue on with Krebs, continue on with our oxidative phosphorylation, just like we had seen previously. So all of these reactions, we got four different biochemical reactions, which a lot of students will study as independent events on this same slide, working together as one big ATP producing machine. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Again, check out the videos on glycolysis, Krebs, and oxidative phosphorylation to get the grand picture of this ATP production. Thank you again.